Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. May 23rd, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. Winning, winning, winning. Okay, my friends, the NFL caves, sort of, to all of us and to President Trump. You know, I've been saying this for a long time. If the silent majority refuses to be silent, you would be amazed at how much change we could enact. And so what happened in the wake of the NFL kneeling, where all of these pampered multimillionaire athletes were openly disrespecting our military, our flag, and our country by either kneeling, sitting, or even raising the black power fist uh, in defiance of the national anthem and of our flag. There was a huge backlash. This show in particular, others, led the way, saying we will boycott the NFL. You're not bigger than America. You're not bigger than our troops. You're not bigger than our flag. And now, after under relentless pressure, with uh, ratings dropping like a stone, revenue in decline, and now uh, the popularity of the game itself in jeopardy, Roger Goodell, the uber social justice warrior, has now essentially waved the white flag, sort of. As you know, the NFL is in serious trouble. They have been hemorrhaging now viewers, ratings, fans for the last two years because they allowed leftists like Colin Kaepernick and other Black Lives Matter supporters to hijack the NFL, spitting in the faces of its fans of middle America and, of course, of our military. Well, now, good old Roger, tough guy Roger, after President Trump called those players SOBs for kneeling or sitting during the national anthem, after Roger Goodell said they would never surrender, guess what? They just surrendered. The NFL has essentially, as I said, waved the white flag. They have now unanimously approved, all of the NFL owners, a new national anthem policy, listen to this, that requires players to stand on the field, right, if they're on the field during the performance of the national anthem. However, as a concession to Black Lives Matter, and the anti-American social justice warriors, those that want to continue to kneel or protest, or God forbid they should stand up and put their hand over their heart and salute the national anthem, players will be allowed to remain in the locker room or in some other site off the field if they do not want to be on the field to salute the national anthem, to stand for the national anthem. According to Roger Goodell, this is a compromise policy, quote, uh, by the way, and if you do, if you are on the field you and you protest, whatever, you sit, you kneel, you put up the black power fist, you will be fined. And not only will you be fined by the NFL, the team itself also has the option to fine the player as well. So there could be a double fine. According to Roger Goodell, this season, all league and team personnel shall stand and show respect for the flag and the anthem. This is what Goodell said in a statement, the NFL commissioner. Personnel who choose not to stand for the anthem may stay in the locker room until after the anthem has been performed. We believe that today's decision will keep our focus on the game Unbelievable. And the extraordinary athletes who play it and on our fans who enjoy it. However, good old PC Roger, Goodell says, however, the NFL is, quote, dedicated to continuing our collaboration with players to advance the goals of justice and fairness in all corners of our society. In other words, we're going to continue to throw millions and tens of millions of dollars at Black Lives Matter, at uh, other uh, cop-hating groups, at Antifa, at other far-left groups, but we're just not going to have you guys, you know, 
spit on the flag on the actual field when the national anthem is being played. So they think this is a compromise. And what they didn't want to do is, and they were clear about this, they did not want to require every player to stand. This was a red line for many of the more liberal owners of NFL teams. For example, like the owner of the New York Jets. They said they did not want to be seen as muzzling NFL players and their supposed First Amendment right to kneel or protest the national anthem, our flag, and our country. Okay. A couple of points, and then I want to throw it open to you. 617-266-6868. Number one, this is no question about it, a huge victory for President Trump. President Trump took on the NFL, and the NFL lost. The same NFL, the same Roger Goodell, that said that they would never, never capitulate to Trump, have now in many ways capitulated. There's no question about it. Basically now, Trump called their bluff. And what the NFL showed, again, is they talk about social justice, but in the end, they're all about money. Show me the money, baby. And when the money started to go down, when the revenue began to go down, when advertising and viewership went down, these guys just did a 180, my head is still spinning. But to me, the deeper point is this. They think they're going to get many of the fans who have boycotted the NFL, like me. I basically do not watch the NFL very little over the last two years. I'm essentially dead. They're dead to me. The NFL is dead to me. They think now, by this cynical ploy, that they're going to get people like the Cooner Man back. Now, I don't know how you feel. I know how I feel. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. And I'll tell you why I'm not going back. Because they showed me their true colors. They showed me who they truly are. That they allowed this to go on week after week, game after game year after year, and only now, because it's really hitting them in the pocketbook, suddenly now, they have respect for our flag. Suddenly now, they have respect for our our national anthem. Suddenly now, they have respect for our troops, our military, and our country. I'm sorry. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. To me, the second point, and this to me is the mother of all points, I'm sorry, But having them stay in the locker room out of a protest for the national anthem is to me still insulting. I'm sorry. The NFL is a private organization. They have the right to have a, uh, a, a conduct, a, 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 an ethical conduct about how people should behave. A guideline for how they're an employee conduct guide. I have one. Brittany has one. Every corporation or company has one. And that conduct guide should say, I'm sorry, if the country that you're living in, and I want you to think about this, is putting millions, if not tens of millions of dollars in your pocket. And it's only in America that you could be making this kind of money. Then stand up, shut up, and salute the flag. If you can't stand for this national anthem, I am telling you, you can't stand for any national anthem. There is no other country in the world where you have players making 10, 15, 20 million dollars a game. Sorry, a year. 10, 15, 20 million dollars a year. Some players, millions of dollars a game. Playing a sport. Soccer in Europe, there's some big money there, but it's nothing like the NFL, not even close. And furthermore, since it's always about race, you want to play the race card? Let's play the race card. The NFL is 70% black. The players are 70% African American. Great. Good for you. Best person for the job. I don't care about the color of your skin. But the fact of the matter is, no other institution has done more to create more black multimillionaires, maybe outside of the entertainment business, than the NFL. So you want to talk about being an oppressed 
multimillionaire? A pampered, oppressed multimillionaire? The only country in the world where you can make millions and millions of dollars playing a sport is in the United States of America. You should shut up, stand, and salute the flag. And if you can't do that, then I'm sorry, you're nothing to me. The NFL has been the best thing for black athletes, and it has been the best thing for the black man. I'm, no one else has got the guts to say it. I'm going to say it to anybody who plays, but in particular, because they so dominate the NFL, and you can't stand up for this? 15, 16, 20, 25 million dollars a year? Playing 16 games a year? I know it's a physical sport, but still. You, st you can't stand for this? No, I'm sorry. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. This is the greatest country in the history of the world. In no other country could you see the kind of money and opportunity that these NFL players have. That you can't even get your rear end out of a locker room and stand up for, what, two minutes for a national anthem? Because you so hate what this country stands for, I'm done with you. You can't compel them to say, listen, I'm sorry. America, love it or leave it. You don't want to stand? Out. Out. Suspension. And if you, keep, if you keep kneeling or sitting, you're out of the league. Period. Full stop. I am not coming back to the NFL. This is too little, too late. Agree, disagree. The NFL now bans kneeling. Is it enough? Will they get you back as a fan? 617-266-6868. Your calls next. 221 here. Actually, 222 now on the great WRKO, Boston's Bulldozer. Okay, the NFL does a complete 180. Kind of. They are now requiring that players on the field, if they choose to go on the field, must stand for the national anthem. However... You want to stay in the locker room as the anthem is being sung? That's okay as well. However, if you're on the field as a player and you do kneel, sit, put up the iron, whatever, the black power fist, then the NFL says you will be fined and the team as well has the option to fine you as well. So a kind of a double fine possibility. They believe they have now squared the circle. They believe now that they have ended the controversy over the NFL and its kneeling. My question to you, has it? Or have they just even made a bigger mess? What happens? Half the team stays in the locker room. Half the, teams goes, half the team goes out onto the field. I mean, if I'm a fan, <laughs> I'd be just as upset about that as I am about them kneeling or sitting or whatever, spitting on the flag in our country. So they think, as Brittany put it to me during the, uh, the break, when we were off air, they think they've put a little Band-Aid on their NFL cut. No, they haven't. My prediction, they're, I, I know they're not getting me back. The question is, will they get other NFL fans who have been protesting the NFL? Will they bring those fans back? Or will it just make the situation worse? Are you going back to watch the NFL? Or are you going to continue to boycott the NFL? Glenn on the South Shore, thanks for holding and welcome. Jeff, thanks for taking my call. My pleasure. No, I will not be watching the NFL once again, Jeff. This, this is so stupid. I was talking to Brittany uh, when I called in. None of these players are going to come out in the field now. Like You're going to have to have whole teams sitting in the locker room, and it causes the same problem. And that's liberalism, Jeff. You know, it just backs you into a corner. You can't win with liberalism. And they think they can win, but they can't. But you know what else I want to say, Jeff? I know this is uh, off subject with school shootings. I went to Catholic schools for 12 years. Uh, I don't know the statistics. Maybe you know. I don't know. I've never uh, looked it up. I don't know if there's ever been a school shooting at a parochial school. Glenn. You know, you just very few times people call me and they ring my bell. <laughs> you really rang my bell. I'm ringing my own bell, Jeff. I'm like, I think you're right. 
And I, I have to I have to look into it. I, I can't, you know, categorically yeah, say it. But exactly. I think I, I, I think you're right, Glenn. I don't think a religious parochial school has ever been attacked in a mass and, shooting. And it goes back to public schools, Jeff, because they make these kids schizophrenic with their crazy rules. Uh, Glenn, I think you're really on to something. Glenn, as always, really good call. Thank you for that call. 617-266-6868. Look, uh, look, just here, think of this, okay? Here. This is a very realistic possibility. Ten players go on the field to stand for the national anthem. The other, whatever it is, uh, 50, 60, whatever the number of players. The rest of the team is in the locker room. Do you know what kind of statement that makes? about how much you hate the flag, our country, our anthem, our military, everything we stands for, everything that the flag and the anthem stands for. So you're not solving anything. They think they're solving something by removing it out of sight. No, 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 no. Just don't have them kneel or sit in front of the cameras. Have them sit and pout in the locker room. And the, the, you, like as if the fans are stupid. They're going to be like, hey, whoa, we're all here. All 50, 60,000 of us, say Gillette, we're there. The national anthem is playing. We're all standing in the stands. We're not making 15, 20 million dollars a year. You guys are making 15, 20 million dollars a year. Look, God bless you. You know, you make 20 million. I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not condemning you're making the money. What I'm saying is you should be grateful that you live in this kind of country that will allow you to make that kind of money. Because in no other country can you be making this kind of money. And again, I don't want to repeat myself. You want to play the race card. In no other country do black athletes make this kind of money. And in no other league is it, maybe NBA, outside of the NBA, 70% African American. If you're black, the NFL and America... I'm a, I'm a, I'm a black football player. All I say every day is, God bless America. <laughs> oh, 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 another, a million dollars a game. The check just came in, baby. God bless America. And you guys are protest. You're going to continue to protest the national anthem. You're going to spit in our faces and you think we won't know it. They're not getting me back. You're dead to me. Period. 617-266-6868. Chuck in Danvers. You're up next. Go ahead, Chuck. Jeff, I love you. Thank you, Chuck. You're the best. Uh, Jeff, I'm not a sports person. However, from what I understand, the prices of shirts, hot dogs, <laughs> uh, water, uh, soda, beer uh, are outrageous. Am I wrong? Chuck, it's going to, you try to bring your family. Good luck. Anything less than five hundred dollars, Chuck. One more quick point: Who, after having, who, who, who are the real oppressed ones? <laughs> us, Chuck. It's us. <laughs> Can I make one real off point? Yes, uh, yes. Go. Uh, yes, quick. of course. Go. Because uh, of all the people to ask the question to, I think you'd be the best person. Uh, the FISA court judge or judges, four of them. Uh, or four times it was renewed. And now those court judges must know that they were lied to. Am I wrong? Yes. No, you're not wrong. No, you're right. Yes. All right. So why can't they retroactively call the whole thing off? That's That may happen. I mean, I don't understand it. I mean, I, I know I'm off point, but I know of all no, no. people. Uh, Chuck, look, I, Chuck, I don't want to get sidetracked, but look, I'm telling you, I'm going to talk about Spygate tomorrow, I promise, because uh, there's a lot of local news that's very important. I'm going to come back to Spygate, I promise. But look, Trump is now calling him out, the criminal deep state. He's now literally calling him the criminal deep state. This is This scandal is the big, I'm telling you, it's the biggest scandal in American political history. People are going to have to go to jail. And the FISA abuse is just one aspect of this massive conspiracy. Okay, Tim and Drake, it. you're up next. Go ahead, Tim. Hi, Jeff. Tim. Um, hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? It's, it, great. great. Hey, uh, you know, I'd like to ring Colin, Colin Kaepernick's bell if I could, <laughs> but um, I really would like to ring his bell. Um, you know, they made it worse. And the re and I believe they made it worse because they gave them an idea 
and not only an idea, but they gave him permission for some to do something that's probably going to be far worse because now everybody's going to be paying attention to this. They're going to be looking for it. Now you might not have one or two with guys, Neil. You might have half of them out there. So basically what they did is they gave them the idea to make it worse, and Ian, they said it's okay. And That's it's right. Ab- it's absolutely, I, I can't even wrap my head around that. That's how ridiculous this is. Well, Tim, and think about other- it. Tim, if, you, if you're if you an anti-American leftist, okay, like some of these players are, you're like, hey, we just got to stay in the locker room now. <laughs> That's it. And, and nothing can happen to us. And they will. Exactly. <laughs> And I'm telling you, Tim, this is going to be a disaster. Oh, my God, what a oh, what a cluster blank. I'm telling you, what a mistake. What a mistake. It's a huge mistake. You know, it's it's sort of like having a kid who's, who's not, a, who's well, it's sort of like this. It's like having a kid, a teenager, who who's obviously can't drink underage, but yet, you know, you don't want him to go out drinking, so you let him drink in the home. <laughs> and, he, and he drinks, and he drinks too much. And he's and throwing he keg to... parties. No, Chuck, they're throwing keg parties at the house. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's far worse than that because this is about honor. And there is no honor. And out of all the call- I want to say one more thing, Jeff. All the callers that call into this station, you know, people call you and they compliment you, as I have in the past and I will today. I appreciate the callers that call in here with the comments and the support and the great ideas because they're people of honor. Tim, that is very well said. Very well said. Thank you very much for that call, Tim. Uh, where's the honor? I love that term. I love that phrase. Where's the honor? Where's the honor in Goodell? Where's the honor in the NFL? Where's the honor in this policy? There's no honor. And to me, when they decided to dishonor us, our flag, our country, our military, our boys and girls who died for our freedoms as they're making m- multi- millions and millions of dollars, these spoiled, pampered athletes, and you can't even stand up for two minutes for them? It's not for you. It's for them. You lost me. You lost me. And I'll tell you what middle America has been telling the NFL, and they don't, they don't get it, so I'm going to tell. Roger Goodell. If your mother didn't tell you, I'm going to tell you. Blank you. NFL is now fining teams if players kneel during the national anthem. Angela Anderson is in the RKO newsroom with those details. Take it away, Angela. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. 239 here on the great WRKO. Okay, big decision from the NFL. They are now going to ban kneeling on the field. You, Any player who kneels, sits, protests the national anthem, they will be fined, and the team will have an option of fining them as well. So basically a double whammy. However, a big important qualifier, the NFL, Roger Goodell, has come out and said, if you want to stay in the locker room or even go on some off-site location outside of the field, you don't have to stand for the national anthem. You don't have to be on the field for the national anthem. And according to Goodell and the NFL owners, it was very important, they said, that the players, quote, not feel muzzled. So they can protest by staying in the locker room. They can kneel in the locker room. Maybe they can give the flag the middle finger in the locker room, whatever it is. But if they want to stay off the field, they can. My question to you, very simple. What do you make of this new policy reversal? And will the NFL win you back? 617-266-6868 is the number. Uh, you can also text us, WRKO. Whatever your message is, so we know it's for us, RKO, your message to 70470-7470. This is from 617. Jeff, I will bet you the NFL football players double down and we will see whole teams kneeling. Interesting. This is going to be an interesting season. So 617, you think they won't even stay in the locker room. That dude is going to say, go ahead, find me. I don't care. 
So interesting. Okay. Um, eight, five, seven. Jeff, a team is a team. All or nothing. Six, one, seven. Jeff, my father fought in World War II and many gave their lives so that these NFL a-holes can act the way they do. It makes me sick. Uh, six, one, seven. Jeff, if people go to the game, they should boo any Patriot players who come on the field after the anthem and then don't go to another game. Um, 508, Jeff, they'll be posting video from locker rooms to social media. Bingo. Bingo. I guarantee it. Um, Jeff, I agree that not going back to the NFL is correct. When people are alienated, they find something else to occupy their time. They discover that the new activity is more enjoyable and therefore won't abandon it and revert. That's life. That's me. I'm starting to like college football. I rather watch football on Saturday and spend the afternoons with the munchkins at the park or whatever. And I got to tell you, I I don't miss football because, I, you know, I get my college football and I don't need the NFL. I don't need you anymore. Um, okay, I want to go back to the phone lines. One more text. Jeff, I was planning on watching. Sorry, this is from 9... 978. Jeff, I was planning on watching the NFL just to watch the Patriots until the Patriots plane <laughs> with the word Patriots printed on the side was given free of charge and used to transport people to protest the Second Amendment. The boycott must continue. Standing for the national anthem is not a choice. It's an honor and a privilege. That is exactly how I feel. When they play the Star Spangled Banner and that beautiful, huge flag of old glory is unfurled, to me, to stand up, put my hand over my heart, is an honor and a privilege. And that it's not for these pampered, spoiled, multi-millionaire athletes, to me, is to their everlasting shame. All right, lines are loaded. Uh, who do you want me to go to first, Brittany? All right, let's go. Let's start it off with Josh in Framingham. Go ahead, Josh. Hey, Jeff. I believe it was 2.15 p.m. when I heard the stupidest thing I may have ever heard on the radio. You said the NFL has done more for the black man than anything? No, than any... Can you explain that? Than any other institution outside of entertainment. Okay. I, I'm pretty sure you said more than anything. But no, I said more than any other institution outside of entertainment. How am I wrong? Listen, I just thought it was the stupidest thing I've ever heard. How many NFL How is players it stupid? are there? There's, there's, there's millions of, of black people in America. There's a very small amount of NFL players. Of course. I, I, don't, think it, I don't think it's done near as much as some other things. Well, listen, I'll, well I'll tell you this. It's created, protest. Josh, Josh, it's created, God knows, countless millionaires. So... Yeah, I, I, so you're telling me, hold on, so are you calling me, uh, honestly, Josh, really, I got, I, I've said it to you many times before, and I got to say it again. Does the elevator go to the top? Does it really? Back your quote and listen to it. It might be the stupidest thing I've ever Okay, heard. so then don't listen to the show. Like, buddy, what's your problem, man? Like, really, honestly, like, the elevator doesn't go to the top. You have a league that has produced more millionaires, black millionaires, than any other institution, with maybe the exception of the entertainment industry, okay? And you're telling me that they, they have a right to feel oppressed? Are you kidding me? Like, really, are you normal? So, is 70% of the NFL the players African American? Yes. Is the average salary for an NFL player in the millions of dollars a year? Yes. I mean, what I said to you is actually standard. This, even the New York Times says it's created more multimillionaires than almost any other institution in American society. But no, we you that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. I'm a moon bat. <laughs> I think I'm smart. I think I'm smart. Please go back to your mental institution. I'm telling you, we you they're calling you back. 617-266-6868. Janine in North Reading. You're up next. Go ahead, Janine. Hey, Jeff. Thanks for taking my call. My um, pleasure. 
uh, I don't know what to say. Um, I never understood the protest anyway. To me, it was protesting America. I, you know, I mean, how many different um, things you're going to na- take a nail for during the anthem? That being said, I don't understand why the NFL plays the national anthem. I mean, if they feel that it, they have such disregard for it that they think it's optional that people can protest it, why do they insult it by even playing it? Well, no, Janine, I think you're making a very, very good point. I, I, I mean, really, I mean, look, this is the greatest country in the history of the world. You're playing in a sport. It's a game. It's a game. And you are making, I'm, I'm literally, 10, 15, 20 million dollars a year. We're talking contracts now, Janine. 150, 200, they have like these five, six, seven year contracts. 150, 200, 250 million dollars a year. If I'm an African American athlete, oh my God. If this he, is if, this if is the greatest country in the. I'd be kissing that flag every day. The NFL's destroyed. Uh, Janine, I agree with you. It, it's destroyed. I agree with you. And notice, Janine, every institution that liberals touch, look how they destroy it. <laughs> yeah, they right, do. Right? Am I wrong? No, you're absolutely right. And I'm in whatever field of professional sports, African Americans have had a greater voice, a greater say, had the opportunity. Look at the Reggie Lewis Center, what that's done for Boston area. They have the opportunity to help, and they really do. But by insulting the country, they're gonna they're gonna lose. I agree with you, Janine. I, and thank you very much for that call, Brittany. I want you to share a story that you told me really over the weekend, but I want you to say it now. Um, sure. So over the weekend, I attended the Boston Wounded Vet Ride, um, where thousands of motorcycles line the streets of Boston. We take a ride, and it's to honor wounded veterans in Massachusetts and all around the country, and That was my first wounded vet ride, and it will not be my last, let me tell you that. And I just wish that these NFL players would go to one charity event where they see these veterans that come back from war, and they do not have their limbs, they're in wheelchairs, and they need us to help them so that they can survive when they get back home, Jeff. I wish that these NFL players would meet with them and understand what they go through every day and what they went through in different countries to fight for us and for what they have. And I got to tell you, there are people that were lining the streets of Malden, Melrose, Boston, Revere, and they were waving their American flags. And I had tears in my eyes when I was riding on the back of my boyfriend's motorcycle. And it was absolutely incredible. I had goosebumps for the whole hour ride that we were on. And I'll say it again. I just wish that these players would go to one of these events, one of these charity events, and meet these veterans, meet any veteran, and know what they've gone through. You know, Brittany, very well said, by the way. You know, um, I remember when the protests first began with Colin Colin Kraepernick. Um, I remember the picture. I don't know if you remember it, Brittany. It It was an iconic picture of a vet who lost both of his legs. I believe it was Iraq or Afghanistan. I think it was Iraq, but don't quote me on that. He lost both of his legs, and he's in a wheelchair. And with his two good arms, as the anthem is being played, he lifts himself up Mm -hmm. on the wheelchair. I remember that, yeah. Straining his arms to salute the national anthem. Now, what does he get? Maybe $18,000, $20,000 a year from his pension if he's lucky. Right. His two legs are gone. You know, I mean, he's never going to walk again. He's paid the uh, one of the, you know, almost the ultimate price. He's paid a tremendous price for our country. He so loves our country, he's willing to stand. These lowlifes can't even freaking fake it. Stand up, put your heart on your heart, you know, your hand on your heart, shut up and show respect for the national anthem. They can't even take 2 minutes to do that. Right, that's what you said. Shut up and salute. Shut up and salute. I agree with you. It's very upsetting. And like I said to you off air, you know, this is just a little band aid. This is just trying to get the people that left watching the games, then no longer watch them anymore. They want them to come back because they need it because their ratings are doing terrible. Their sponsors are, are fleeing and they just want us back. And I'm sorry, but this is not going to bring me back to watch the NFL. And I'm sure it's not going to bring our audience back. Well said, Brittany. 617 266 6868. You know what I'm thinking, Brittany? One of these days when the Cooner Man takes a day off, you should fill in for me.
Thank you. I really appreciate it. That's an honor, Jeff. It would be an honor for me to do that, actually. <laughs> but, I mean, I want you to do it. All right, let's, let's make it happen. All right, Brittany? All right. Two, two, <laughs> deal, let's shake on it. Two, <laughs> through the booth. Two, uh, 251 here on the great WRKO. I promise we'll take more of your calls next. Aaron in New Hampshire, you're up next. Aaron, thanks for holding and welcome. You know, Jeff, if you're looking for an alternative to the NFL, the National Women's Laundry Football League all stood <laughs> last year and will stand again this year. So there you go. <laughs> Can I make a red flag comment? Yes, please. Whatever. The floor is yours. All right. It sounds like such a scam. You know, it's just like liberals to use people's, you know, when people are at their lowest, to use them to their advantage for their for their agenda. First of all, there's no way politicians should have any business in people's relationships or their breakup. Second of all, you have two people who already don't like each other, whether there's anger there, depression there, sadness there. You're going to create a way for one person to get revenge over the other person. All it's going to take is one guy to, uh, for his cheese to slip right off his cracker, and he's going to shoot his ex in the head or shoot himself in the head, and then every single one of those liberals is going to point the finger at him and say, we need more gun laws, when they're the ones that created it themselves. Well, Aaron, you're completely right, but it's even worse. Look how they're empowering the judges to now decide who gets to keep their gun and who doesn't get to keep their gun. I mean, this, it's, it's gun confiscation through judicial supremacy. That's what this is. That's why this red flag, this anti-gun rights bill that DeLeo is introducing today, uh, to me, I've seen violations of the Constitution, but this one may take the cake. So I'll be honest with you, I may have to do another rally, I swear to you. It's, it's going to be like Rally Summer. Not really, Aaron. It's like, you know, like these concerts, you know, like yeah. some, it's going to be Rally Summer. So we got to take care of Feely tomorrow. And then maybe next week or whatever, we got to protest in front of Baker. Tell hey, him not to sign up. this bill. Sign me up, Aldo. <laughs> we'll make it a Saturday afternoon thing. <laughs> Aaron, Brittany's giving me a really dirty look right now. <laughs> I don't know if I can take all these rallies. That's Jack. what I mean. Cause she's got to do, she's got to do a lot of the organizing, make it all work. She's giving me this look like, you know, yeah, you go and talk with the megaphone. I'm the one doing all the work behind the scenes. No, seriously, I've had to go all around the world to find you a <laughs> megaphone. <laughs> so I, but anyway, who knows? We may have to do another rally. Eric in New Hampshire, you're up next. Go ahead, Eric. Hey, Jeff. Yeah. You know, uh, all these rallies, we're the ones that have to work to support the illegals. So. You know, you're going to have to do it on the weekends. Well, yeah, or you figure, Eric, at least the illegals could join us, you know? Right. Like, come on down, take a day, and then, you know, whatever the protest is, say, hey, they're paying for my tab. Let me protest (laughs) with them, for God's sakes. There you go. Uh, So I called because uh, not only do I not watch football anymore, um, although it will be hard to see, to not watch how this uh, comes about, but... I say the players that choose to stay in the locker room um, can stay there for the whole game. And when they decide to come out, I'm guessing they should probably have their helmets on when they walk out of that tunnel. Oh, because you think what fans are going to be pelting them with eggs or rotten tomatoes or something? Yeah, they (laughs) might want to bring out an extra suit, too. (laughs) Look, I love that. You want to stay in the locker room during the National Anthem? You stay in the locker room for the whole game. That's it. That's all. Okay, my friends, I got to go. Remember, tomorrow's the big rally, 415, in front of the Salem Superior Courthouse. Jeff Cooner, Boston's bulldozer, cleaning up the liberal bull. The Cooner Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. 888-800-1881. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. The voice of Boston is you. 680 WRKO Boston, 100.7 WZLX HD2 Boston. An iHeart Radio station.